Hello and welcome to the 18th session in the DML School. I'll be here for today. My name is Chris Mayo and I'm with the uh, training department here. Today's topic um, will be adapted from exercise P9 in Kirilson Weiner 5th edition, turnover models with repeated doses. Um, this exercise will have two examples in it. In the first example, um, our objectives are to characterize the pharmacodynamics of um, a new anxiolytic compound, Zopark, after repeated um, extra-fasting or PO dosing. The, uh, the data were collected during a phase two study um, in psychiatric patients at 5 milligram and 25 milligram dose levels. And the objective here is to establish, establish turnover characteristics of the biomarker. Okay, so um, this is an exploratory plot that says the responses versus time at the two different dose levels, 5 milligram and 25 milligram. Um, so the, uh, the yellow plot here, um, this is the repeated dosing, this is QD. Uh, and at the uh, 5 milligram level, and then at the 25 milligram level, uh, the purple line, we see the um, response time profile here. Um, we'll uh, make a note uh, that in onset phase, uh, you can see more pronounced effect as expected um, with the higher dose level, but the time um, to the steady state condition, the, the minimum response, is similar uh, for the different dose levels at the different dose administrations. And so for this reason, uh, the model of choice will be um, turnover model number one, which is inhibit, um, inhibition of the um, end parameter. For the pharmacokinetics uh, for Zofar, these have been characterized in a previous study. And this compound uh, follows a one compartment model. Uh, the extravascular form with microconstants is dose times Ka divided by volume of distribution times Ka minus Ke. Chris, may I interrupt? Sure. Yeah, I mean, your your voice sounds a little bit choppy. I mean, it's it, do you have a headset on, or can you change the, the line? Because it's not that easy to follow. How is how, this? No, not much better. Any, any better now? It's a little bit with an echo, right? I mean. Oh, okay. Um, if you want, I can dial back in. Yeah, may, maybe you try try that. Yeah. Okay. Um, how, how is this now? Yeah, just yeah. Maybe we just continue. Yeah, it should, should be should be good now. Okay. Okay. So I, I apologize for the audio difficulties. Um, so let me maybe go back a slide. Um, so we're we're comparing the response time data um, after repeated QD administration of Zoopark at five milligram and twenty five milligram dose levels. And uh, we see the two profiles here. Um, so we have four doses um, for each dose level. And uh, noting that the, um, the increase in dose does uh, increase the inhibition, uh, but the time to the minimum uh, response is the same at the different dose levels. And therefore, we will use turnover model one, uh, which is uh, inhibition of, uh, of KN. Okay, um, as far as the PK of Zoopark, this has been characterized in a previous study. 
Um, and it follows a one compartment elimination model uh, with the extravascular administration. And the, um, the final parameter estimates for the PK are uh, for the KA, 1.1, um, elimination rate constant KE, 0 0.128, volume of distribution, 5 liters per kilogram. Okay, so for the turnover model uh, with inhibition of, of production, um, the rate of production is inhibited by the inhibitory function I of C, um, and the exploratory plot suggested that maximum uh, inhibition is possible, uh, so therefore the I max will be set to 1. And the indirect response is modeled using a change of response versus change of time equals the Kn times the inhibitory function minus K out times the response, where Kn is the zero order rate of production, K out is the first order rate of loss, and uh, I of C is the mechanistic inhibition of Kn. So the inhibitory function, um, I of C equals 1 minus I max times C to the gamma, where C is concentration, uh, divided by IC50 to the gamma plus C to the gamma, where the IMAX is the maximum inhibitory response. The IC50 is the concentration at which 50% of maximum inhibition occurs, and uh, gamma is an exponent, uh, exponent for the sigmoid IMAX model. The full turnover model, substituting in the inhibitory function, is Kn times this inhibitory function we discussed minus K out times R. And the objective here is to get final estimates for the parameters in this model. So those are the Kn, K out, I max, IC50, and gamma. Okay, so to set this model up in the Phoenix application, uh, there is a built-in, uh, there are some built-in models, the PK indirect, allows you to uh, link PK to an indirect response model. And so we're using microparameterization with an extravascular absorption and one elimination compartment. And since we already know uh, the PK, uh, we can choose the option freeze PK. And then to set up the indirect response model, um, make the menu selection shown here. So inhibition uh, uh, limited of buildup. And then toggling this to exponent will include gamma in the model. And we see to the right here that the, uh, the PML statements get written automatically when these built-in uh, selections are made. Okay. Um, it's also possible to show the model in graphical mode. Uh, so this is the graphical um, version of the model uh, where we have PK here. We have a dose administered to the absorption compartment. Um, a rate of absorption Ka into the central compartment, which has a volume of distribution and an amount of the central compartment. And then elimination from the central compartment occurs um, via Ke. Um, from there, uh, the concentrations get fed into an Emax block, uh, where we have the different uh, parameters associated with the indirect response model. And then the, the actual observed responses are this green block here, uh, and these are coming from the, the, the effect block. Okay. And then lastly, the PML code. Uh, this is an annotated version of the model that we will provide uh, in, in the forum after the uh, session is complete. Um, so the first section here, these are the differential equations for the PK model. Um, and these are expressed as amounts. So amount in the absorption compartment equals minus Ka times AA. And then for the central compartment, the amount in the central compartment A1 equals Ka times AA minus Ke times A1. For the indirect response model, we have this expression here, and uh, this was shown in the presentation slides. To indicate that the dose is extravascular, the dose point is delivered to the absorption compartment. <clears throat> and the concentration in the central compartment uh, equals the amount in the central compartment divided by the volume of distribution. To set the initial conditions for the response, uh, baseline response um, R at time zero, 
uh, we use the sequence statement, sequence uh, E equals K in divided by K out. The next segment um, shows the, uh, the observations, the effect observations with the additive error model. The PK parameters, um, since uh, we're using these as frozen fixed effects, so these are the, uh, the values that were found in the previous study. And then lastly, we have the indirect response parameters declared as fixed effects, and as well as the initial estimates. So the C statement with uh, parentheses and the value here, uh, if desired, you can put boundaries in here, so you can go lower bound, initial estimate, upper bound. Uh, in this case, we simply have the initial estimates for the indirect response parameters. Okay, so how are initial estimates uh, determined uh, for this data set? Um, so let's start with the response at time zero. Uh, so this was 80, and this is from the exploratory plot. And then to get an initial estimate for K out, we look at the onset slope. Uh, so this was the first portion of the, uh, the curve as the response is decreasing initially. And one can use the, uh, get the, evaluate the slope um, using the natural log of the, the first response minus the natural log of the second response divided by the first time point minus the second time point. Uh, so for this data set, that is natural log of 80 divided by 48 divided by 0 minus 8, which gives an estimate of 0 0.06 for K out. And then since um, the response at time 0 equals K in divided by K out, uh, our K in estimate equals R0 times K out, which is 80 times 0 0.06 equals 4.8. Um, from the exploratory plot, we saw that, that it's possible to get a maximum inhibition, so the IMAX is set to 1. Then the IC50 initial estimate can be obtained by first finding the time of 50% inhibition and then solving the PK concentration function at that same time point. So in this example, the IC50 is 0 0.25. And then lastly, the gamma exponent, um, you can evaluate, you know, model fitting, maybe start without an exponent, but if you determine an exponent is necessary, uh, there's a, a handy initial estimates tab uh, in Phoenix that you can use to find the initial value for gamma. Okay, so at this point I would like to switch over to my uh, Phoenix application. Okay, uh, Burns, can you see my screen okay? Uh, clear, yeah. Great, thank you. Okay, so as I alluded to before, um, the, these are the examples. This is the first example. Um, we have the input data set here where we have the time points, the responses, and then the group will identify what the dosing group is. So there's two dosing groups, a 5 milligram group and a 25 milligram group. Uh, we have here the exploratory plot for example one, which shows the, uh, the 5 milligram and 25 milligram uh, dose groups uh, with the plot of response versus time. So to set up the um, indirect response model, we'll take the um, example one data set and then send this to Phoenix Modeling and then Phoenix Model. And I'll put that in the workflow for example one. Okay. And we'll call this uh, EX1 inhibit KN. Okay, so we'll start off by um, specifying the structural model, which will be PK indirect. The parameterization is micro with an extravascular dose administration and one elimination compartment. And I'll uncheck uh, closed form to show the differential equations in the PML code. And additionally, since this will be linked to the uh, indirect response model, I'll go ahead and select freeze PK, since the PK um, parameters are known. And then lastly, set the indirect response parameters. So this is going to be inhibition limited of buildup, and then the exponent will include gamma in the model. In the um, 
the mapping panel at the top and we'll go ahead and map uh, the response as the observed effect. And then uh, the, um, the group will be the ID variable in this case. So since we're in this population mode, um, we're going to get one set of parameter estimates for, across both of the dose levels. And we'll specify gr group as the ID. Um, next, we'll go ahead and enter in the, uh, the dosing. And for that purpose, we can use an internal worksheet. And I'm going to uh, enter in the times first to fill out the dosing sheet. And these times actually um, are the same for both dose levels. And then we'll designate the group variable here. And then lastly, the amounts, which are 5 for group 1 and 25 for group 2. Okay. So at this point, the, uh, the dosing has been entered. We'll now go to uh, the parameters tab, a fixed effects sub-tab, and put in the PK parameters. So for KA, that was 1.1. Volume of distribution is 5. And KE is 0 0.128. Okay, and notice that since we selected freeze PK, uh, these are actually frozen. So there's no boundaries. Uh, these will be fixed values in the model. Uh, for the um, indirect response parameters, I'll go over to the initial estimates tab. Okay, I'll start by setting the time course to span the range of data here. So that's um, 100 uh, should suffice for that purpose. Um, as discussed in the slides, the uh, KN initial estimate is 4.8. K out is 0 0.06. Okay, and you can see the actual uh, predicted response here overlaid with observed, and it changes as these, uh, these estimates are entered. The value for uh, IMAX is set to 1. IC50 is set to 0 0.25. And then typically we'll uh, modify the gamma last. So after these um, estimates are found, um, we can try some different values for gamma. So I can, uh, you can see the, uh, the response shape is starting to uh, approach the observed and get uh, more uh, curvature here. Let's try a value of 2. Okay. So particularly at the end of the, the profile, um, this, this looks like a close overlay with the observed data. So we'll go ahead and take uh, 2 as the initial estimate for gamma. Uh, these checkboxes here just um, uh, stipulate that the parameter must be positive uh, when the box is checked. Lastly, we'll go to the Run Options tab and set the method to Naive Pooled. So we're not doing a, a true population analysis. We're simply getting uh, one um, set of uh, parameter estimates uh, across the two dose levels. And at this point, we'll go ahead and run the model. Okay. and look at the selected outputs. So I'll start with the, um, the overlay plot. Um, so this shows the overlay of observed and predicted uh, at both of the dose levels. And it looks like this, uh, this model was able to converge successfully and get uh, predictions that, that closely mirror the, the observed data. Next we'll look at the theta to find the final parameter estimates for uh, KN, which is 8.8, .8, K out 0 0.1, IMAX as expected uh, converged at 1, IC50 was close to the initial estimate, and gamma was reduced from the initial estimate of 2 down to 1.34. But we got a, a good uh, parameter precision uh, from this model fit. 
So this is uh, this is the first example. Burns, uh, can can you get me to the next slide? Sure. Wait a second. Uh, Cheryl, uh, I guess I don't have the uh, permission to do that. Cheryl? I'm trying. Is that it? Okay, yeah, yeah, that, that's it. And uh, just go ahead and make me presenter again, and hopefully it will advance here. Okay, um, yeah, Cheryl, I'll have to ask you to advance the slides from here on. Okay, I'm going to take call back. Okay. Okay, so so um, here we see the, um, the the fitted results, and the lattice version of the plot will show um, the first um, dose level on the left, and the second dose level on the right, and then we get the uh, the final uh, parameter estimates. Next slide, please. Okay. I'm having an issue with it today. Stand by one moment. Hey, Burn. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so our, our next example, um, we will uh, evaluate two models, and both um, inhibition of production as well as stimulation of loss. Next slide. Thank you. And so in the exploratory data analysis, we actually only have one dose level here. And the, the, the mechanism is not known. It's not known whether this is uh, stimulatory uh, for the K in, uh, for the K out, or inhibitory for the K in. Uh, but this is the profile here. So there's a rich data set, and, uh, and, and, and there are two doses, uh, two infusion doses here. Um, so um, what we have at this point is um, that the response um, minimizes at two. Um, for, for both uh, administered doses following the two rapid infusions. Next slide, please. So since um, the mechanism of action is not known, we will um, develop two different turnover models and compare them using model diagnostics. Uh, the first is um, inhibition of production, where the change in response equals Kn times inhibitory function minus K out times response. And then the second model will be stimulation of loss, where um, change in response equals K in minus K out times the stimulatory function uh, times the response. And we will use the standard diagnostics, Akaiki, Schwartz, and minus two log likelihood, as well as the parameter precision to decide which of these two models is better for this data set. Next slide, please. Okay, so for the second compound, the pharmacokinetics have been characterized in a previous study. Um, for the IV infusion administration, um, the three-compartment model uh, is used with clearance parameters. So the, um, the first um, three statements are the amounts, and we have uh, clearance for the uh, different uh, compartments included in these statements here as well as concentration in the central and the two peripheral compartments expressed as A1 divided by V, A2 divided by V2, and A3 divided by V3, respectively. The PK parameter estimates um, here, uh, we have the volume and clearances of the three compartments shown here. Next slide. So for the, um, the inhibitory function, uh, this is, again, the uh, I of C is 1 minus I max times C to the gamma divided by I C 50 to the gamma plus C to the gamma. Next slide. Okay, and then here is shown the, uh, the full model substituting in the, the inhibition function. 
And again, uh, the aim here is to get the final estimates for K in, K out, IMAX, IC50, and gamma. Next slide. Okay, so um, we see here the, um, the uh, built-in mode that, that's used for this particular model. Um, inhibition limited of buildup uh, with an exponent term. Next slide. In the graphical mode, um, this shows on the, uh, the left we have the, um, the uh, three um, compartments here. So the, uh, the central compartment uh, is expressed as C, it has a volume and then the amount. Note that the dose administration, that blue circle, is administered directly to the central compartment. And then we have uh, a clearance from the central compartment. Uh, that's the, the first clearance, CL. And then we have distributional clearances um, expressed as bidirectional clearances, uh, clearance two goes to compartment two, which has its own volume two and amount two, as well as uh, clearance three, which goes to compartment three with volume three and amount three. From the central compartment, and the effect block um, has the indirect response parameters, and then we take our um, observations from the effect block. Next slide. And here we have the annotated um, PML code. Uh, the first block shows the differential equations uh, for the PK model. The second block shows the, um, the response function, the full response function, including the uh, inhibitory. Uh, the dose point is the A1. It's an IV dose administration. Uh, the concentrations are shown in the, uh, as C, C2, and C3. Um, we establish baseline re response using the sequence statement, E equals KN divided by K out. And then next we have the observed response and error model. The PK parameters are again found from the previous study and uh, they are entered as frozen fixed effects. And then lastly, we will um, uh, show the fixed effects for the indirect response parameters as well as their initial estimates shown here. Next slide, please. So to obtain initial estimates for the first model, um, we'll again start with the response at time zero, which is 11. <clears throat> Use the onset slope to find K out using the, uh, the log of R1 minus log of R2 divided by time one minus time two. And uh, that initial estimate for K out will be 4.4. KN is obtained from R0 times K out, um, which equals 48.4. And in this case, the IMAX is not assumed to be one. Uh, to find the IMAX, we can use uh, one minus the minimum response divided by the response at time zero. So that's one minus two divided by 11 equals 0 0.82. The IC50, um, first we will find the time of 50% inhibition and then solve the PK concentration function at that time point, which gives 250 for the IC50 estimate. And then, as before, we will use the initial estimates tab to find um, a initial value for gamma for the model fitting. Next slide. Um, and then, uh, since we're comparing models here, uh, it might be useful to add a table um, to the model. So um, what Phoenix does by default is it gives a predict only gives predicted points um, at the same times where there's an observed um, response. Uh, and in this case, what we're doing is we're using, uh, adding a table of predicted values um, where the times use the sequence statement. And the statement is sequence 0, 2.5, 0 0.1. Uh, what this means is produce a predicted point uh, from 0 uh, to 2.5 every 0 0.1 time unit. And we'll, um, we'll predict the, the um, variable's concentration and effect. Next slide, please. Okay, so at this point I'm going to switch back to my uh, Phoenix application.
Okay, so for example two, uh, example two we have here the exploratory plot. And my starting point, um, since we have this um, three compartment model, this is the, um, the PK model with the um, estimates for PK already built in. Uh, I'm going to simply rename this model object to uh, EX2 inhibit KN and then uh, begin to edit the structure. So this will be a PK indirect. Uh, the PK is already filled out with infusion data and infusion doses, uh, clearance model with three compartments. And for the indirect response, we'll set this to inhibition limited of buildup with a gamma exponent. And choosing the option freeze PK. Okay. So in the mapping panel at the top, we'll set the response as uh, EOBS. To get a look at the dosing, uh, this is actually entered already. These are infusion doses uh, with where A1 is the amount, and then this is the rate of infusion as well as time of infusion. So these are two successive uh, infusion doses. At this point, we'll go over to the Initial Estimates tab. Okay, so for the initial estimates for KN, this is 48.4, K out 4.4, and IMAX 0.82. IC50 is 250, and make sure to uh, copy these to initial estimates. And then for the gamma, I can uh, increase the gamma and see, try to get a value that, that more closely uh, fits, overlays the predicted with the observed. Okay, so we'll go ahead and use 10 uh, for the gamma for this particular model set. And then lastly, we'll go to the Run Options tab and add the simulation table. So this is accomplished on Run Options, Add Table. Add the sequence statement, so that's SEQ, open paren, 0, 0, comma, 2.5, comma, 0 0.1, close paren. And our variables here will be C and E. Uh, this is case sensitive, so capital C and capital E. At this point, ready to run the model. Okay. And we'll look at the, the plots here to um, look at the fit. So this is the um, predicted, overlaid with observed, and also verifying that we got a theta tab with final parameter estimates. And indeed we did. Okay, so at this point, um, I'd like to switch back to the presentation slides. Okay, and it seems I have control back, so that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> Um, so um, that was the first model. The second model, um, we will look at the drug me uh, mechanism using a stimulatory function. So our stimulatory function, F of C, equals 1 plus E max times C to the gamma divided by C to the gamma plus E C 50 to the gamma, where E max is the maximum stimulatory response, uh, E C 50 concentration at which 50% of maximum stimulation occurs, and then gamma, of course, is the exponent. Okay, so our turnover model um, in this case becomes the change in response versus time equals the Kn, unmodified, minus K out times the stimulatory function times the response. And for this model, we'll get final estimates for Kn, K out, Emax, EC50, and gamma. Okay. So um, in this slide, I'm showing in the built-in options where we'll make a modification. So this is going to be the same as the previous model, except we're um, uh, stating that we have a stimulation limited of loss. The 
geographical model is the same, but note that the Emacs block has uh, Emacs parameters instead of IMAX parameters. And then lastly, we have here the, uh, the PML code. And again, uh, this, these, uh, the text versions of these will be um, submitted via the forum following the session. Okay, so initial estimates for model number two. Uh, this is the same data set, so the K in and K out estimates are the same. Uh, for the Emacs, this will be estimated using a response at time zero divided by the minimum response minus one. And that gives an estimate of 4.5. The EC50 uh, is found by um, finding the time of 50% recovery, then solving the PK concentration function at that same time point, which gives an estimate of 350. And then gamma from our, from our um, other model was, the estimate was 10, but we can evaluate that on the initial estimates tab. Okay, at this point I'll sw switch back to the Phoenix application. Okay, and we'll get to see a little bit of an ease of use of Phoenix here. Um, I'm going to do a second um, model here with many of the same characteristics as the first model. So I'm going to simply make a copy of this model and then paste it back into the workflow. And then call this um, EX2 stimulate K out. Okay, so using this approach, uh, my mapping panel is already set up at the top. Uh, the dosing is already entered. Uh, all of the PK has already been entered. Um, where we begin to make changes are in the indirect response. So I'm going to change this to stimulation limited of loss. Okay, we'll leave the exponent term uh, in the model. And then uh, proceed to the initial estimates tab. And note that we changed two parameters. We changed from IMAX and IC50 to EMAX and EC50. So the values for these uh, defaulted to one. Uh, and as we discussed in the slides, the initial estimate for EMAX is 4.5, and for EC50 is 350. Okay. And you can see that the, um, the predicted response uh, overlays nicely with the observed, so these will suffice for the initial estimates, and go ahead and run the stimulation of K-out model. Okay, and we'll go and verify that we did get a fitted curve here, and indeed that the model did um, find a fitted curve, as well as produce uh, final parameter estimates. Okay, so um, this, um, the, the two models have now been run, uh, so now to evaluate which model is better for this data set, we'll uh, use some data tools to pull the diagnostic outputs. So I'm going to start with the inhibition of KN and take the overall. The overall diagnostic will show, um, show these um, diagnostic outputs, minus two log likelihood of Heike and Schwartz. So to get these into one sheet, I'm going to right-click overall and select Send to Data, and then Append Worksheets. And I'll call this Append Overall. And then choose uh, Source Columns, uh, the diagnostic outputs that I wish to compare. In this case, Return Code, Minus 2 Log Likelihood, Kaiki, Schwartz, and NPARM. We'll do the same for Worksheet 2. And for worksheet two, we'll take the stimulation of K out overall result, and then pick the diagnostic outputs of interest. Okay, so this gives a nice summary worksheet uh, showing the two models. So the first is inhibition of KN, second stimulation of K out. And uh, in this case, the inhibition of KN had smaller values for minus two log likelihood, Akaiki and Schwartz. So across the board for all of the, the diagnostics, 
uh, the inhibition of KN was, was the better model, according to the diagnostics. Okay. You can also examine the parameter precision. We'll take um, the theta table, starting with the inhibition of uh, KN model, send this to data, and then append worksheets. And we'll name this worksheet append theta. Uh, if you're wondering why we're not using the model compare, the reason for that is that this is uh, run in individual mode. Uh, model compare must be done in uh, population mode. Okay, so uh, in this case, we're using the data tools to compare, which are parameter, estimate, and CV percent. That's for model one. And then for model two, we'll take the stimulation of K out theta worksheet and then also select parameter, estimate, and CV percent. Go ahead and execute. Uh, now, in this example, there are many parameters, uh, both for PK and PD. Uh, to get uh, a nice visual uh, comparison, I'm going to use the sort feature in Phoenix. That's uh, this little sort worksheet, this little A swapping with B icon in the upper right corner, and uh, sort by parameter name ascending. Okay, so I can basically ignore uh, these first, this first set. These are all P, PK parameters. Uh, for the PD parameters, you can compare the uh, EC50 and Emax. So this is for stimulation of K out to the uh, IC50 and IMAX with respect to parameter precision. So the, uh, the inhibition of KN uh, had a coefficient of variation of uh, 2.3 compared to the 5.4 for stimulation of K out. Uh, for EMAX, uh, the CV percent lowered from 8.6 down to 1.4. Uh, if we can compare gamma, um, the KN was, was able to find uh, a, an estimate for gamma with better precision, uh, 88.6 compared to 12.5. And also for KN and K out, the CV percent was, was lower for uh, the KN model uh, for both of these parameters. Okay. And lastly, we can look at results using these um, output tables uh, that we did. So uh, to do an overlay plot, I'm going to uh, just basically import a, a, a template here to save a bit of time. Uh, but what you can do is you can pull in the observed um, template. And set up a uh, set up an x y plot. Okay, so this is for the um, the observed response. Okay, we have here um, response versus time for the quick styles. We'll uncheck show lines and just show the uh, the symbols for the observed data. Um, to get some additional graphs, I'll go to plot and then the graphs tab. And we'll call this uh, observed response. And then use the add button uh, to add a mapping panel. And this one will be inhibit KN. And then click add again, and we'll call this uh, stim K out. Okay, so for the second mapping panel, we'll pull in <clears throat> the table one, where we have time and effect. And on the quick styles, I'll uncheck show markers. 
And then for the appearance, this will be line color red. And then for the K out model, go ahead and choose table one, where we have time for X, effect for Y, set the line color to blue, and then quick styles um, only show lines. And go ahead and execute. I want blue here, and I want red here. Okay. Okay, so um, in the, the overlay plot, um, we see the, uh, the black circles are the observed responses, and then uh, the predicted um, lines or stim k out. I want only the line. Okay. Um, so the the red line is the inhibit k n model, and it was able to actually better capture the um, minimum response for both the, those levels. And then during the recovery phase, um, the inhibit k n also fit better uh, than the stimulate k out predictions. Okay. So that, in, that concludes the demo portion. I'd like to go ahead and switch back to the slide. Um, and open up for any questions. All right. Uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, nice presentation, nice demo. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Um, so this will be maybe a short Q&A unless people are um, entering new questions as we um, cover these two. So the first question, Chris, is um, uh, about the theta table. Uh, what is considered a good or poor parameter fit based on the CV percent? Mm. Thanks, Bernd. Um, yeah. So, so as a um, as a rule of thumb for the the CV percent, um, if you're able to get uh, below 10 percent, you have a very very precise estimate. Um, it, when you when you go above 10 percent. Uh, then you might want to consider refining the model um, and uh, and seeing if you can get a better fit. Um, thanks, Chris. Um, one other question is related to that. Some, uh, sometimes parameter precisions are not given in the CETA table. Um, can you please comment on why this would be? Sure, sure. Yeah, so. Um, Usually you see this in, in population mode with some of the, the modeling engines. So the parameter precision is actually um, a, a complicated um, calculation. And it, it more often happens when you're in population mode and when you have a large number of parameters in the model. Um, there are a couple of ways that you can get a better chance of calculating uh, the parameter precision. One is to, to fix. So if you have a very precise estimate for one of the parameters, fix it as a constant using the freeze option. Uh, this lowers the number of fitted parameters and increases the likelihood that you'll get a, a CV percent calculation. And then when you're in the population mode, um, the, uh, there's a modeling engine, the QRPEM engine, which um, is very robust at calculating the uh, standard errors and CV percent. And so if you're having difficulty um, getting them in one of the other modes, such as FOCE uh, or naive pooled, you can try the QRPEM. And then lastly, in population mode, if, if even QRPEM cannot get them, uh, you can use a bootstrap option in the population mode uh, to calculate your CV percent and standard error. All right. Uh, another question, uh, would you also compare residual pat patterns when you compare to, between two models? Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the residual patterns um, are, are, are a good way, uh, diagnostic for comparing models. And Phoenix actually um, produces um, these, these diagnostic um, output plots. So if we were to look at um, some of the uh, residual plots, we could look at, say, for example, um, this is versus time. So the, the blue line is the central trend line. Uh, these, these circles are the, the different residuals. So um, the first thing to look at is magnitude residuals. Um, ideally, these fall between plus and minus two. 
and also for any pattern. Uh, so we're looking for a random uh, scattered pattern. Uh, and actually, the, uh, the KN residual plot looks pretty good here. Um, we have uh, the, 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 um, the blue uh, trend line is close to zero and relatively flat. And the two loss lines, which are the red lines uh, mirroring in the positive and, and negative direction, are within the plus and minus two and also have a similar horizontal pattern. For the uh, stimulate K out model, and look at the corresponding uh, residual plot in this case. So um, again, the, the magnitude of the residuals is, is not large uh, with this rich data set, but we begin to see more of a, a fanning pattern at both ends uh, for the stimulate K out model. So it had a difficulty in the, the onset and also in the offset. Uh, so this is one type of a pattern you can look at um, in the case of model misspecification. Maybe final question, and you're just in, inside the application, so you can show it quickly. Um, you've shown the simulation, you know, with the two additional tables with um, co concentration and response versus time. Can you also show a plot uh, response versus concentration? from these tables? No, just use the outputs, the tables. And yeah, yeah, you, you, you certainly can. Uh, so, so again, this was set up on the Run Options tab, and where we use the sequence statement to produce these outputs. And these outputs are given in this uh, sheet named Table 01. Uh, so if you wanted to um, uh, look at these, the, the effect versus concentration, uh, you can uh, uh, send this to the plotting tool very easily. And we'll call this uh, the inhibit KNC versus E. Uh, actually, we would typically do E versus C, where E is the Y variable and C is the X variable. OK. So this is the uh, E versus C plot for the inhibit KN model. And then for the stimulate uh, K out model, uh, we can do the same thing. So. M K out E versus C. Okay, so that, that, that's how um, how you would set up this particular plot. Um, you know, in the interpretation, remember that there were two doses administered here. So we're actually sort of seeing uh, the the first uh, E versus C, uh, and then we're seeing a second one here with less data for the second dose. All right, thanks, thanks, Chris. That's that's all question for now. Wonderful. Th thanks, Bernd. Okay, can we move on with the slides, please? Yeah, I mean, as as usual, uh, you know, we are posting the materials on our forum, the usual link uh, on our Satara forum, uh, where you will see the model text files and uh, the link to the recorded session. Um, you can also post questions or comments there. So if, if you want, you can also send them to the support channel, support, etc. Um, next slide, please. Uh, maybe one uh, information for you regarding the channels, how we want to, uh, you know, uh, distribute notifications and updates of materials and question and answers, discussions, and outcomes of new sessions. We have uh, just recently created a new LinkedIn group. Uh, and if you have a LinkedIn account, I would just uh, encourage you to join this LinkedIn group. The link is given here. Um, and just uh, use that for getting the latest uh, and most recent information about the PML School. We are also on Twitter, as you may have already seen. And all the recorded sessions, which are 18 by now, are also available from our YouTube channel. So um, please visit this one if you want to re-watch those, those videos. OK, next slide. Uh, as, you, as, as you see, I mean, we are starting to give you some snippets about, you know, how to deal with Phoenix, the Phoenix Vinolin, and uh, specific, specifically the Phoenix model object. Uh, but if you want more about this, more detailed information and, and, and a, a really um, more sort of a training on, on these, these modules, I would uh, uh, recommend you this, to, to go to the Salvatar University where we've got lots of courses available for introductory, intermediate, and advanced level on the different uh, ranges of, of uh, applications like win on win population modeling, uh, IVIVC toolkit, and so forth, and other uh, uh, 
uh, contents like uh, fundamentals of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics and so forth. So uh, just look at, uh, at this. We've got some uh, on-demand uh, courses uh, and as well as classroom courses, so all the offerings on Satara University. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, coming up is uh, we've got another session on the uh, female school um, in four weeks, in two weeks' time, on July 27th, uh, where we have a dose response time analysis uh, and where we look at instantaneous effect models. Okay, that's I guess that's it. Thanks you all for your continued interest and uh, hope to see you in, in two weeks' time and you may want to disconnect now. Thanks.